Hi, I'm Tim the Trail Man, and I work for AQHA, and today I'm going to show you how to measure the various obstacles that you may use at home to practice trail. Okay, so the next obstacle we're going to set up is just a typical fan set of trot overs or lope overs. We're going to assume that they're lope overs with a six foot increment in the, in the position where they travel, okay? The first thing you have to do is decide where you think the line of travel is going to be. The most common line of travel is usually two thirds up the pole and not the center of the pole, which I'm just going to draw a line, which is about two, three foot from the top of the pole. This line here that I drew in the ground represents the normal line of travel a horse should travel when he's doing a lope over here. Thus, what I'm going to say is this. I like the center pole being the diagonal pole of 45 degrees to the fence right here. I'm going to measure using the dumb end because this pole is not going to move, just the two outside poles are going to move. Apply that tape to the center pole, moving away from that pole and looking for where six foot is, that center of that white stripe. Okay, so I've got six foot right there, about two foot, one foot for that stripe and a half a stripe here, about two foot off the end of that pole. Then, since this pole is permanent, I'm going to reverse my tape this way, put in the center of that white stripe, try to find the center of this white stripe, and once again, try to find where six foot is. Now the big question you always ask me is, what gap do you put on the bottom? And this is our rule of thumb. Go back to your shoe. If your shoe is a foot, we like to use our boot as, as our measuring tape. The width of our, or the length of our boot being the distance that the pole should be away from each other. That's, that's a good rule of thumb to use, is, is you, which is probably about 12 or 14 inches. And this is your typical one stride, one stride lope fan or or two landings, two stride, two stride trot fans. We like this obstacle at the six because you can jog it and lope it. We're gonna to go to a more advanced obstacle and we call this the smoke, a spoke, a four-legged spoke here. And the important part of the spoke is, is where you measure the poles versus the center cone or marker, okay? I think it's always good to have a normal size cone which I would represent by this, which is approximately one foot by one foot in its base. Okay. The first objective is get the first pole very straight. In this case, we'll call it this pole here. So, first I'm going to try to line up this pole versus the fence and see how straight I can get this versus the cone. Okay, I like that position there. Now, the most important part of this is how far to measure this pole versus this cone and the magic number is two feet. Two feet away from the cone. From the base of the cone to this pole should be two foot. I don't know if you can see that inside to inside. Because the cone doesn't get a move, I put the dumb end on the cone and I push the tape out or the pole out. So once again, we're looking for 24 inches, which is right here. So we got the pole straight and we got our two foot alignment in here, okay? The next pole I like to mark is the net pole that goes away from this pole, okay? So once again, not moving the cone, because the cone has to be still. Now I move the pole away or, or into the cone, so it's two foot going this direction. Okay, so we got two foot on this side, two foot on this side. Then you must check, make sure pole one and pole two aren't in alignment, which they are. So I like these two poles, so once again, I'll probably just bury these poles a little bit, so they don't move out if I ride over and hit them. Okay, next we'll go to pole three. And the first thing I kind of like to do first is make sure it's perpendicular to those two poles. So the cone can't move. So this pole's the only thing that's allowed to move. So we get straight, line it up, make sure we got some alignment versus the cone. So it's kind of like a T-bar, I call it. And then we go back to go two foot from the cone. Not moving the cone, but only moving the pole until we get to two foot, and then finally burying the pole. So now we have three of the legs set up. We have one more leg to go. So we come on this side, you can check the two foot distance right here away from the cone, and then go back here for alignment. See how this pole lines up with the first pole, which is pretty darn good. So now we have four poles, two foot away from a one foot base cone. And that's how you, how you set this up. And the purpose is, is, is that when you ride this pole, 
There should be approximately 18 feet on a line of travel close to this location. Trying to get three landings at the lope, about two thirds out. This rides very nicely in, in most of your classes. This is a very common distance for horses to, to go over this obstacle with. And then out. And that's kind of the line of travel you're looking for, that circumference of that circle, about two thirds out, as long as the poles are away from the cone. Now if these cones, if the poles are shorter, or the distance of the cone is shorter, that means the line of travel has to be further out, which is very difficult. So I find that this is a very common distance that makes it very easy to ride. Okay, the next obstacle is a very typical obstacle. It's just a normal back through L. In AQHA, backing is, is one of the mandatory obstacles, and you'll find in most divisions and most breeds that the back through, is, back through L is a very common obstacle to see when you show. To measure this obstacle, the common distance is three foot, okay? Two, three, and six is my favorite distances because it's always the same. So once again, we're looking for 36 inches or three foot. And so we go to the top. First of all, you really want to find one pole that's very straight, okay? So we're going to say this pole is our first pole here. This pole is very straight here. So then this, we're going to measure everything off this pole. So now the inside pole will, will push the dumb in the pole that can't move, push the tape away, and we're really close to 36 inches, okay? Then just to make sure the poles are parallel, we'll come down to this end, put the dumb end on that side, putting this pole down, 36 inches, burying that pole, okay? Next, we're gonna measure the gap here, and that also is 36 inches. Actually, I should be measuring the opposite way. That pole is permanent, so, We'll come this way, looking for 36 inches, and there we go, perfect. <laughs> then we'll come down to the final gap here. Look at 36 inches, and we are right on it. So now, normally my back, these are three foot by three foot, and you'll see that all the gaps look symmetrical, and then you got good alignment toward the, toward the arena walls and everything. Next obstacle we'll talk about is the box. The box represents walking in or jogging in, stopping, turning either direction, and walking out. The thing I like about the box on the striped poles is that I use the center stripe on each pole to represent six feet. So I know that if each pole is in the center of this white stripe here, every pole is in the center of the stripe, every pole is in the center of the stripe, then this box should be six foot. Actually, I gotta kick it a little bit. And then, obviously, I'm gonna tape it out and check my distances to six foot, which is right there. Right there, right there, perfect. Six foot again, 72 inches, yes. And the final spot here, yep, and then of course I like to bury the poles all the time so I don't move when I'm, when I'm using the obstacle. You'll find that burying the poles is a good tool because you, it gets very aggravating having to get on and off that horse a few times. So you really want to bury these poles in the ground so they'll stay there even if your horse hits them. Side passing, I call it a retro obstacle, okay? It's one of those obstacles I bring out when I think it's necessary, okay? You know, this year we, we brought the T side pass. Tomorrow at the Select World, we'll be using an L side pass, okay? I use those in classes that have only 15 horses. Now, if I have a class of 70 horses or 30 horses, a larger size class, you'll hardly ever see me using a side pass. It's just too long, it's too much time consuming. But when you have 15 good horses or a finals or something like that, I'm allowed to use the T side pass, the L side pass, all the different flip side passes and, and I'm allowed to ask for that gate just because it's a time consuming obstacle and I'm allowed to watch that happen. It's not my favorite obstacle. Typically on a, on a side pass, you know, the, it, it's usually an L side pass and all you're doing usually is building a corner. There's two ways of doing it. This is what I would do if I was at home, okay? If I was true at home, I would have the, the two types of side passing. I call it the gap side pass and a pole side pass, okay? 
the gap size pass representing a six foot gap in here and wheel side pass inside the gap versus stepping over a pole and straddling a pole and side passing over the pole. So in this, in this maneuver here, I'm allowed to side pass in the gap, either right or left. And with my horse like this, I would side pass between the two rails. Or I can actually just straddle this pole here and straddle this pole and side pass right or left around the corner and side pass over this direction. So it's kind of a versatile side pass if that's what you want to practice. You know, I usually have the gate in, in play, so that's usually what shows me that a horse can side pass. That's why I don't use the side pass as much, because hopefully I see that maneuver at the gate. So setting up the course is about being, being good with your tape measure, making sure everything is very symmetrical and aligned, making sure you're not moving the wrong pole when you're measuring, okay? Um, always, like I said, always the distances are inside to inside, and, and you just gotta make sure the poles are parallel. Make sure that the wood that you're using, whether it be a 12 foot four by four or a natural pole like we use in the field, that's always straight, okay? A lot of times you'll find poles that warp a little bit, so one end is, is a little bendy and the distance at that end is different from the distance from this end. So you gotta make sure you know which boards are straight and which are crooked. And then another thing is when you use a shorter pole, like an eight foot landscape timber, that, that reflects the distances too, like on your, on your fans and everything. Like I wouldn't do that eight foot pole fan with a one foot increment in the center because there's not enough uh, length on, of pole, it wouldn't be the correct position. Actually, it has to be a little wider, okay? It has to be a little wider gap if you use a landscape timber. You know, I, I, when I do my clinics or I give my lessons, I tell my friends all the time, you have to try it. Okay? Trying is the one gear that they don't do enough of, okay? A lot of people don't want to trot because it's a rough gear. A lot of people don't want to trot because it's not smooth, okay? You'll find that if you use the pleasure jog or horsemanship jog, it's a shorter distance trot. So when you have three foot trot overs, by the time you get to the second or third pole, you're probably starting to hit some with the back of your legs because you're probably not having enough impulsion on the trot. So I'm telling people all the time, whether you like it or not, you have to trot. The other second thing is doing your slow obstacles, your back and your box. It gets hot. No one wants to practice the slow stuff. We want to lope all day long. So you'll find a lot of people like to lope, 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 but they don't want to do the basics. And when you skip the basics on your green horses or your intro horses, that it'll, it'll catch up to you because it's very important to have good foundation. One thing I tell you when it's all about signal response. You send the signal, the horse responds to your signal. The other thing I say is where you look is where you land. So whatever you tell your horse to do, that's where they're going to position their feet. Okay. The other thing is in, in the field, lots of transitions. I love to see lope to trot. I like to see trot to lope. I like to see walk to trot, walk to lope. I like to see how you make the transition prior to going over the wood. So I'm going to tell you, it's not only, I call it dancing over the wood, horsemanship over the wood. You have to have the skills that you would have like in a horsemanship class along, you know, your horse in control, making great transitions, going forward a high, to a higher gear, plus going back down to a lower gear. Hopefully today we've showed you how to measure some courses, measure some obstacles, obstacles you can use at home, a few tips about you know prepping your horse and showing. Um, all I know is, is that you need to practice, okay? Like shooting basketball, throwing a basketball, football, whatever you do, it's all about repetitions, doing your practicing, it's about having the, the proper equipment to use, and then go from there and um, it's one pull at a time. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Want to take your trail horse to the next level? We highly recommend that you get a copy of AQHA's premium how-to DVD, Showing to Win Trail, the best how-to trail class video on the market. It will show you how to successfully navigate an AQHA trail class pattern and explains the scorecard. Learn what the judges are looking for and how to get a step ahead with help from some of the most respected and successful AQHA professional horsemen, judges, and exhibitors. Visit AQHAstore.com to order your copy today directly from Quarter Horse Outfitters. Showing to Win Trail is your bridge to success in the AQHA Trail class.